The Atlanta Braves extended Alex Anthopoulos, and myself and Logan Whaley are going to tell you why that's a win for now, it's a win for next year, and deep into the future of the Atlanta Braves on today's episode of The Crowd of Booth. Pile in here and make yourself feel at home. Coming on the crowded booth with Bryce Coon. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, it's no longer the holiday season. It is no longer bowl season. Uh, no more hotel lobbies of with Christmas music uh, just painting our ears. It's Bryce Coon, Logan Whaley, Chopaholic Podcast, all things Braves by two guys addicted to the Braves, unhealthy addictions. Logan, how are you doing? How is the new year treating you so far? I know that uh, we've been trying to connect and you and I both been kind of all over the place with uh, our our respective uh, day jobs, we'll call them. Right. Yeah. Day jobs. I mean, you know, coaching searches, recruiting, like all that stuff is uh, very rampant this time of year. So uh, it's been pretty good, though. Can't complain too much. Uh, but I've, you know, when baseball season comes around, um, it normally hits me out of nowhere. But in this case, I'm just so looking forward to it. Like it, in the past, normally it's like, you know, like late February, early March when it, you know, when the fever really starts to hit me. But this year, I don't know. It just, I really start to feel it right now. I'm one of those guys that like, and guys or gals, uh, you know, Hey, there's, we're not going to discriminate here, but, I, but I'm one of those folks. I'll say that like, I pay way too much attention to like the game cast of like the February 29th game between the Braves B team and the Orioles a team. Like that's yeah. like, you know, that I, I, I but I love it. And, and I'm going to listen to Ben Ingram, uh, give some great calls, you know, of, uh, you know, in the seventh inning and the eighth inning as number 99, who with no name on the back of his jersey pitches to a guy with, you know, 67 and no name on the back of his jersey. But that is, look, we love baseball and, and we're quite ready for it. And we were just kind of joking the respective colleges that we cover, getting ready to start college baseball season, which just signals spring training for the Atlanta Braves is getting closer. We're going to have some previews and give our takes on what Atlanta has going into the season here in the next couple of weeks. But Logan, something that uh, we're going to talk about here today is – Really something that kind of uh, is down into the news cycle, but I thought it still would be, and, and you had a great idea of kind of how to put our own little spin on it here, and it's the Alex Anthopoulos extension. Um, man, I don't know if we need to answer the question whether this is a win or not. Like, this is a big win for the Braves. Uh, you and I both feel that way. I'll kind of start it off with this right here, Like, and we can take this conversation here. When you look at the extensions Atlanta signed, and everyone's talked about it across baseball, nationally, locally, regionally, whatever you want to talk about it. Logan, when you see that, and then you extend the guy who is the responsible for those moves, it kind of gives you some confidence and some continuity that maybe you can work out another deal with these guys. Like maybe you can sign Ozzy back. Maybe Acuna can be in the picture when his deal's up or before his deal's up. I know that there's a lot of, uh, you know, fear factor when it comes to extending people and giving people money with folks like this, but you got to feel like, you know, this is a win all the way around, but specifically for that, it feels pretty good if you're a Braves fan, knowing that there's going to be some continuity in the front office. Yeah, absolutely. And I look at, you know, just kind of going back to when Anthopolis was, was hired, right? It's crazy to think about the perception of the Braves franchise from, when mm -hmm. that transition was happening between copy and, and Anthopolis versus where it is now, right? Like, I think you look back to 2017 and you think about the excitement of the young prospects that were on the rise, but to see pretty much all of them hit and then Anthopolis not only locking them up, but adding to that, it, it really changes the way the Braves franchise, I think, is viewed. And it already was, you know, a very, very good franchise with a storied history, but you almost look at Anthopoulos as probably if, I mean, I would say he's the best general manager in baseball and just to see how he's grown the franchise and, and how, um, you know, like, like I said, the Braves uh, franchise is viewed now to me is just, it's fantastic. So to me, locking them up was a no brainer. Um, and, and especially through 2031, like you mentioned, I mean, that's a big opportunity for, you know, for them just to, to look at, you know, the, the guys that are locked up and potentially get that second contract in there. So, yeah, I'm very excited about 
what this means for the future, but uh, especially right now, it's just nice to have that uh, that assurance that uh, you know what has worked will probably continue to work. Yeah, and two, I mean, you ha- you talk about the best general manager in baseball, and you know, non Braves fans may say, whoa, 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 what about that guy going on in L.A. and all these different things? Look, I think it's easy when you have a lot of money to shell out that money and you know spend the way you want. What I think, and we're going to get into this when we talk about some of his best deals, his ability in a couple things, because it's not all him, and I think he would say this too, his ability, first off, to surround himself with a great scouting department, a great analytics department, and then, Logan, to be able to kind of turn and say, okay, now we're going to get the best value. Yeah, these might be the big names, but we're going to get the best bang for our buck, and we're not just going to do well with it. I mean, I don't want to get too far into it because we're going to list some options and some names, but man, I think that's the big win is like, as, as this baseball spending across the, across the league is seemingly going up and I know the Dodgers are heading a lot of that up. The ability to get the best value for your dollar is something that I think is going to become very, very huge for any team wanting to stay in contention for a long period of time. And the Braves might have one of the best guys for that in, uh, in, in Anthopolis. Yeah. And again, it's kind of looking at just the way that he goes about operating the team in some ways he's, you know, zigging when everyone else is zagging. Right. And especially Mm -hmm. looking at his approach with with free agency. I mean, you don't see a lot of guys locked in for multiple years and the guys for the most part that he signed, it's, it's worked out tremendously. And then you look at the trades that he's made and, you know, some, some people may think, well, you know, it's just, it, it's luck. And honestly, that, that may play somewhat of a role in it because look, it's baseball. You can't predict every single outcome that, that's going to happen. But with Anthopolis, you, you could just tell the how methodical he is. And a lot of these moves as we're, we're going to break down, uh, it, it's really paid dividends in the long run. And you can see just even the domino effect uh, of some of these moves and how it's led to the Braves being what they are now. And I'll tease it as we get into this segment of the show. It's some of the non moves that he has made that even maybe spoken louder, uh, you know, when you kind of look at it. So let's do it. We've teased it long enough. Everyone knows Anthopolis' extension was a good thing. It's been in the news cycle. Logan, I'll hand it off to you first. Okay. I- I've got a couple right here. So I've got about, I'll just be honest, I got about seven or eight. And I don't know how many you have in the chamber here, but I imagine we're going to cross over at some point here. So you yeah. you knock it out first here. What what are some of your top moves? It doesn't have to be you know in order of one through five or anything like that, but just some of the moves that have really. Uh, we'll go. Let's do this. You go one, then I'll go one. Okay. Well, to me, I feel like if you look at Alex Anthopoulos, his signature moves as GM, I think you look no further than the 2021 trade deadline, right? You look at those mm-hmm. trades that Anthopoulos has made that, you know, when Acuna went down to the, the ACL tear, just how he was able to, you know, you don't want to say replace Acuna because, I mean, Lord knows there is no replacing him, but to trade for guys that gave value in that outfield. To me, and, and I don't know if it's cheating to, to say, you know, to group all of those moves into one. Um, no, no, so it's fine. I, yeah, you could, we can say okay, 2021 20, okay. deadline it is a group of moves starting with Jock Peterson yeah. and moving to the 31st. I'm cool with that. Yeah, Jock, Duvall, uh, Solaire, and Rosario, right? Those are the four. And was there any pitching you, you brought at, in? I can't remember. I can't remember either, to be honest with you. I'm sure there were some relievers in there. If I remember correctly, you keep talking. I'll I'll keep looking. I'll go back and look. Yeah. Yeah. But again, you just look at the, uh, to me, Jock would probably rank the highest up there. Just when you look at uh, the, the, the players tribune article (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) and just the, you know, the pearls, all of that, just the swagger that he brought to Atlanta, I think was, was so needed. And especially because look, I, I wasn't the biggest fan of Jock Peterson before he got to Atlanta. Uh, I think Braves fans, uh, have nightmares from him uh, in prior uh, playoff series against the Dodgers. But when he got here, oh, yeah. it was uh, like a total 180. And, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say he was universally disliked, but if you were to ask the average Braves fan, I would probably venture to guess that a lot of them weren't the biggest fans of Jock Peterson. But then he gets here and, you know, he's one of, he's only been, he had only been there for a few months, but I think he's like one of the most universally loved Braves of all time. All right, so I've got one here for you. Uh, they they did get Richard Rodriguez. 
that was uh, the re- reliever from Pittsburgh that they got. But that wasn't obviously. I don't even think he made the postseason roster. I don't. I don't believe. No, I think he struggled he so bad down the, st- yeah. down the stretch. Um, but yeah, the four outfielders that everyone knows, and then they also. I mean, you look back at this. They traded Alex Jackson for Adam Duvall. Like Logan, what what do we do? Right. <laughs> um, they well, did it, release people, people had a high. Mm. Yeah, mm. that hurts, man. But yeah, you're good. Keep going. I was just going to say, uh, you know, I, I remember people viewed Alex Jackson pretty highly at that time, right? Like catcher of the future. Weren't, weren't people thinking that? Yeah, it was kind of between like Alex Jackson was the older prospect than William Contreras at the time. And we were kind of like, OK, Jackson had bounced back from being kind of an outfielder who was a catcher originally and you know all that kind of stuff in Seattle in their organization. And then, uh, yeah, man, that's crazy. Do you know who else was designated? This is a trivia question. Oh, if you are watching or listening, pause it, think about it, and then play it again. Do you know who was designated for assignment to make room for Jock Peterson and Tuki Toussaint, who was reinstated? Like, just off the top of your head. Oh, man. There's If you get this, Logan, you're either I, cheating. I can't get this. <laughs> no, I, I can't. I don't think I can get this. Jonathan Lucroy. <laughs> that's amazing so i i did a fun, fun story so uh i can't remember which immaculate grid it was but i i pulled a jonathan lucroy answer out of that i i cannot remember what the context was but that's the first time i've heard that name in so long besides that immaculate grid pull i got the other day yeah no and your immaculate grid Once by the way that you sent me was unbelievable um and we'll have to we'll have to Share that at some point. That was wild. Uh, Braves I, legend I, Juan Francisco. I'm, proud. <laughs> I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud of the pool. Uh, definitely was not productive at work today, by the way. Okay. If I'm That's thinking okay. of Juan Francisco. <laughs> All right. So you go 2021 trade deadline. Um, I, you know, we, we've got a long list of these we can go through. I'll quickly, you know, give mine here. Logan, when I look at it, I, I'm going to go non move. And it's not succumbing to the pressure of re-signing Josh Donaldson. I think that's something yeah. that really, really paid off for the Braves. Understanding that Austin Riley had come up, you know, letting him develop uh, might be one of the greatest moves that we've ever seen. Allowing him to say, "Hey, no, this is our third baseman." Because I'm sure at some point, I don't know if it was Anthopoulos or it was Dane Brown at the time or whoever it was, stood up on the table and said, "Hey, no, we're going to let Austin Riley develop and be this third baseman of the future." Now it looks like it's a cornerstone franchise player and all, you know, so thankful because you could also say signing Josh Donaldson was massive, but not re-signing him might even be bigger because of the, uh, the, the albatross of that contract. And I mean, just call it what it is. Josh Donaldson is a shell of himself at this point in his career. Right. And even then, you know, you mentioned the the pressure that was there. It, it's because, Donaldson performed so well on that one year deal. And it, mm-hmm. like Anopolis knew exactly when the cutoff uh, was there. And, and you look at it, you, you were exactly right. I mean, looking at Austin Riley and I can't imagine how tough it was for Anthopolis during that time too, because you know, I mean, just his history with Josh Donaldson, I mean, dating back to Toronto, I mean, he has done tremendous work for, for Alex Anthopolis. And so yeah. to let him walk was probably a really tough decision, but it worked out for the best. So yeah, wholeheartedly agree with that. All right, we'll flip back to you now. What's what's your next what's your next move? Or collection okay, of okay. moves. Uh, yeah. Collection of moves, right. Uh I, I wanted to throw an honorable mention for signing Bartolo Cologne, but that didn't work out for the Braves at all. Uh just just for just for the sake of seeing Big Sexy in a in a Braves uniform. Uh, mm-hmm. which by the way, I did go to a Braves game with him pitching. And it was amazing for like uh, pregame, and then the game started. And was that the same off. year they rolled with R.A. Dickey? <laughs> I think so. I, and I maybe Brandon really Phillips played so. second base for them. I, I, I think <laughs> yes. that we're. Oh my gosh, oh man! My anyways, gosh. Those, anyways, yeah. We we need a deep dive through the the 2017 Braves roster. We we just need a an episode where we dive deep because I there are some names on that roster that make no sense but they were there and yeah it, it was amazing so yeah wanted to wanted to i just that just came to my mind so i i felt like i had to you know toss that out there but uh yeah the extension or to me the collection of moves that 
I want to throw out, it's the extensions, right? Extending mm-hmm. Albies, extending Acuna, extending Strider, Riley, all of those guys, because they are the core of the Braves franchise. And you look at them being locked up, to me, it allowed Anthopolis to branch out and make the moves to help out that core roster. I mean, making yeah. the trades for for Sean Murphy and, and Matt Olson, et cetera. And you can probably – put that in there you know I don't I didn't know if I just stole one from you there but um but either way I, I think the extensions for me were probably one of his better moves and I know a lot of people at that time were thinking you know how in the world could you know he's he's, he's stealing from these players because it, it, it signs it, they sign so cheap and you people also don't realize that well they're gonna they're getting paid more than they would have during arbitration and the yeah. fact that you're able to cover the first couple of years of free agency as well to me is, is huge too. So those extensions for me uh, rank up there. No, that's a good one. I'm going to go with another extension here. And I know that this is a guy that is often questioned. Uh, It's a guy that is, uh, I think, I think maybe you and I see a tad differently. And we question some things, especially during that playoff series uh, when they lost to Philadelphia, the, the the most previous the most recent time not the previous time but uh you know just in general but it's really i think you could it's a plus rather than a minus overall is keeping the faith with brian snicker because i really do think knowing the at atlanta logan was going to be in a rebuild and you know after the 2017 season you're sitting there uh you know it, it seems like you wanted to kind of do that it really would have been easy what a lot of other teams do is to bring in a guy that can kind of catapult that, get the fan base excited. And they really just, you know, after the 2017 season, they, they give them the extension. They win the NL East in 18, which ultimately has started this run of winning division titles again. Uh, you know, the, he was named manager of the year that year. You obviously get the World Series. Uh, you reach the NLCS in 2020, the World Series in 2021. And I know the last two years have obviously been disappointing. But I think that, if we kind of go back and look at it, like Anthopolis, the willingness to stick with Snicker has ultimately paid dividends regardless if you win another world series, because you did what you set out to do and you won a world series within the first couple of years of that extension. So I'm not speaking necessarily the future because I don't know what's going to happen. None of us do, but I think from what we've seen so far, pretty good decision to stick with him when we know how well respected he is in that, in that clubhouse, in that locker room. Yeah, no doubt. I think Snicker is somebody that, was universally liked by Braves fans until he became manager in some ways, because yeah. there are a lot of question marks, right? <laughs> People talk about the bullpen management all the time with, with Snicker and they still do. But I think you look at the way that the players rally around him. And I think that that also, that that was also a huge factor in the world series as well, because you, you saw how tight knit that that group was. And uh, it really seemed like it was just the perfect combination of personalities in that, in that clubhouse. So yeah, that's going to be so interesting when Snickers tenure with the Braves is is over. Like that's Mm -hmm. just going to be so weird to think about, especially like who they would go after to replace him. I would love to see Ron Washington as Braves manager one day. Oh, be amazing. Be amazing. (laughs) Um, all right, I'm going to hand it back to you. I've got a couple more in the in the in the holster here. I don't want to fire off the hips. I'm going to hand it back to you. Where, where are you rolling with this third one? Yeah, this third one I, I, again. So I I did the, the way I thought about it was just a collection of moves. Mm-hmm. So I, I talked about the trade deadline. I talked about the extensions. I want to talk about the free agent signings. I mean, we already touched on on Josh Donaldson a little bit and the decision to not keep him. The decision to bring him on board was a really, really good decision considering the stability he brought to that Braves lineup that season. Uh, but also you look at Travis Darno and, and what what he brought to the Braves for, you know, I think it was a two-year deal. And that was one of the rare multi-year deals, I think, that mm-hmm. uh, that that Adopolis uh, did. And it was Travis yeah. Darno and it was really cheap. And Darno had some really good seasons with Atlanta. That was one of mine, Logan. Braves. That was one of mine. Two years, sixteen million. He caught every single inning in the postseason of that twenty twenty one run, and really, you could say he's one of the main leaders in the clubhouse. Massive, massive. So yeah. I agree with you there. Oh yeah, absolutely. That was the one of the first things I thought of with with the signings, and you know, even then, I think, you know, the the two other names I thought of with with the free agent additions, uh, Charlie Morton, and look, I know that he's kind of a polarizing 
brave right now, but I mean, no question that he's been really good for the Braves. No mm-hmm. question about it. it. Has he been an ace? No. But has he been a solid starter for the Braves? Absolutely. And then uh, finally, Marcelo Zuna. And again, another polarizing figure. But bringing him on board after Donaldson and the season that he had, especially in 2020, I mean, just a, a, it was a great signing then. And just the fact that he's been able to shift over to DH permanently, I, and the bounce back season that he had this past year, that extension was probably the most questionable thing considering, you know, the off field issues that Ozuna had. And that probably yeah. was looking like one of the moves that was going to backfire the most on Anthopolis. But last year was almost a bit of a redemption for Ozuna. And so I'm curious to see what happens. Uh, what he's got, I think what this year's the last year or is it next year? I believe this year's the last year. I'll look that up real quick. Yeah, I believe it's, I believe this year's the last year, but no, look, I agree with you on a lot of those. I mean, you look at, um, just the, the savviness of the moves that he has made and it's just, it's just wild to see. All right. So here we got it. I got it for you. Uh, it is the last year of his deal. He will have a club option, uh, in 2025. I imagine they declined that. Um, and then would be a, an undrafted, it says a UFA. Of course, he's an undrafted, not an undrafted free agent. I'm already thinking NFL draft there, Logan. Um, which by the way, your Tennessee Titans made a move. So I'm excited. Very, very I am excited. too, and I'm I'm waiting on the Falcons to do something. I'm scared that they might hire Bill Belichick, but I'll also say, I, well, just one off right here. Do you think Mike Vrabel was a bad coach? No, no, he definitely was not a bad coach. But was it the right decision to move on? Time will tell. Uh, truthfully, because I it Very felt good. like there was just massive dissension in the front office. So I, I felt like this is too important of an off season for there to be dissension in the front office and your head coach like they're too too important all the cap space mm-hmm. plus the number seven pick plus you know will levis who showed a lot of flashes that's uh too important to mess up yeah yeah all right we're gonna go um with one more well you went first so i'll go here and then we'll go one more after that five total uh this one for me I, i'm gonna i'm gonna hold on to this one because this is my this is my fun that my, my just you know one that i absolutely love i'm gonna go orlando arcia and I'm going to go two full with Orlando Arcia. One, the trade to go get him. So if we remember, if we refresh Braves fans' memories, Willie Adamas, uh, you know, obviously traded from Tampa over to Milwaukee, uh, really became kind of their guy they wanted to go with. Arcia was a guy that as uh, top prospect once, uh, the bat never really, I think, got to where the glove was in Milwaukee. And so they they make this trade complete value like for a couple for i guess i don't even remember how many years it was logan at this point but at least two years two full years it felt like you had a guy that could play multiple infield spots was a really really good pinch hitter i mean he would just come up and 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 you know could could make some big time at bats had a walk-off home run i remember against boston i think is a pinch hitter uh you back in 2022 or 21 one of those years that being said you then opt not to go after and and sign one of the big name shortstop free agents, which is going to be what I'm going to talk about in the last one. And then you extend Orlando Arcia for like $2 million a year, and he turns out and becomes an all-star caliber player. Now, is that going to continue? I, I, I don't know. But at the very least here, Logan, you have a guy that – I'll, I'll say this too. Didn't really like, you know, uh, some of the antics during the Phillies series that he, and that's, that's, that's a whole nother conversation. But as far as on the field value, what you got out of this, this is crazy. Once again, just a lot of bang for your buck. And you found a guy who f- kind of fits into the thing, maybe the culture of this team too, uh, especially with the, you know, the Latin American side uh, of these players. It's a close knit group and Arcia kind of fits in. So I think I applaud Anthopolis on kind of twofold here making the trade for Arcia, seeing something, and then sticking with him for a year or two and saying, no, that's going to be our starter and kind of signing to an extension where at the very worst, he's a versatile bench piece going forward. Yeah, and two, people are always going to look at Dansby and they're going to compare him to Dansby. Mm -hmm. And look, is Dansby a better player? Sure, absolutely. But who is the better value? And I think that is such an interesting topic of discussion because Dansby did have a good year with the Cubs. But he did. He did. Arcia, though. But Arcia had a, a good year with the Braves himself and for much cheaper. So I don't know. That, that It's an interesting uh, discussion there. But my, my last one, I, I'm going to go with another recent one uh, as well. It's, it's the trade to go get Matt Olson. Mm. And look, 
the Freddie Freeman situation, and again, it's been talked about pretty much ad nauseum, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone knows the the situation. It, it was very sad to see Freddie go, regardless of the circumstances of how it happened. It was very sad mm-hmm. to see Freddie walk, but at the same time, Anthopolis just wasted no time, right? Like he yeah. wasted no time. And I know, and I know that that pretty much was the reason, you know, in the long run that Freddie walked was because of that trade to go get Matt Olson. But you look at the pieces he gave up. And it's looking already now, granted, still a lot of time, but it's looking like a massive win for the Braves. Matt Olson, is he better than Freddie Freeman? <sighs> that That's tough to say. I, I don't think so right now, mm-hmm. but he projects better, obviously, long term because of the age. And look, he's already, to me, top three in baseball as far as first basemen go. And you traded, you know, prospects that already seem like they're not going to pan out. Yeah. And so to me, I look at that, I look at that trade and I, I think it, it's, it was definitely one of the more controversial ones of Anthopolis's run, but it looks like history is going to be pretty kind to him, especially getting a guy that uh, just came off a season where he led the majors in home runs. So yeah, yeah I think that that is uh, one of his better trades and time will tell if it's going to end up being his best move, which I think it has the potential to be. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I know you weren't with us doing the show before, but uh, we talked about it when it happened. Remember, we went live that day, and you know, obviously the emotions are obviously raw. You're a Braves fan. Freddie Freeman was with us, obviously. Uh, you know, through the through the really really bad years, the 2013 line, lineups that were not fun to watch at times. Um, you know, but if there, and, and I remember saying this, like if there's a guy that you're gonna go get, it has to be him. And what's crazy to me, Logan is the industry knew that and he still got the better end of the deal. Like when everybody in the room knows what you need, it's like when you're, uh, when you're playing Uno and you're the person with the last card. Okay. And everyone at the table knows exactly what the card is in your hand. Like what you, what you need down. They know you need a blue. So you can put down your blue three and turns out you had a wild card because you were going to win no matter what. Like that's kind of how I feel like this, this move was. And uh, man, that, that was that, that was that, that's a really really good one. Uh, I'll go with my last one here, and this for me speaks to the volumes of where I think Braves country is, where Braves fans are, and and this push all the time. And you and I have this conversation. We'll really kind of get into this, you know, obviously going into the season and with potential moves that need to be made. But this idea of why can't the Braves shell out the massive contract? I'll say this. I don't think there's a quicker way to derail an organization's future and potential than to shell out one of these contracts because oftentimes they don't pan out over the course of a long run. Anthopolis has established that Atlanta wants this championship window open for as long as possible with the extensions that he gave. Uh, That being said, kind of twofold here. What I mentioned earlier in my last one with choosing Orlando Arcia, by virtue that allowed you to go out and trade for Sean Murphy, which you really didn't necessarily need. You sign him to an extension. You save money. You have an all-star caliber second baseman. And then you have probably the best tandem, catching tandem, in the league. Uh, and Sean Murphy, I mean, carried this offense for a little bit. Uh, when he, I remember he was on that tear where he was just, just I mean, killing the cover off the ball uh, for, for you know, a spot in the, in the summer. And I know people said, oh, during the you know fall or whatever, whatever, whatever it is. You could have been in a similar situation, maybe with Williams Contreras, but to have the confidence to trade Contreras, and he, I think he won a silver, I'm pretty sure he won a silver slugger um, with Milwaukee this year, but to have the confidence to do that and go out and get your guy to where now Darno, I mean, look, like you mentioned, uh, with Azuna, if Azuna leaves, I could see Darno sliding in for maybe one more year after that as the DH, and maybe he calls it a career. But you got your catcher of the future, and you have a guy who is one of the best defensively that helped you also with you know the increase and in uptick in stolen bases. I think the Sean Murphy move, and we both kind of talked about Oakland A moves there. Sorry, Oakland A's fans or Las Vegas A's or whatever you're <laughs> going to be going forward. Mm-hmm. If the Matt Olson moves an A plus, like to me, the Sean Murphy moves got to be around like an A minus at least, because like that was yeah. a great move, in my opinion. I really, really like that. And to see how it's paid off after just one season and to kind of see what the the players, like their perspective on it, 
I don't know, man. I, it, that that for me is one of the best ones. Right. Well, and you look at the perception around Sean Murphy around that time too. It was primarily a defensive type guy who maybe the bat would have gotten better whenever he left Oakland. And then look, he, he was uh, up and down as a hitter for the Braves. But yeah. to me, it felt like he overperformed expectations as far as, you know, what the perception of him was as a catcher. And mm-hmm. I'm really excited to see how that translates next year too, yeah. to see, to see what he does at the dish next season. But obviously, you know, the, the glove's going to be there. The, you know, the arm is there. I mean, no question about the defense, but yeah, you know, the offense, can it take, can it take that next leap the next season? Which I'm, I'm curious to see. I think it will. Yeah. Looking right here, Sean Murphy's stats um, for last season, he batted 251, which is right around his career average, actually a notch higher uh, where it was, you know, had the 21 home runs, 68 RBIs, uh, struck out just 98 times in 370 plate appearances. So, I mean, that's, you know, he's not a big swing and miss guy. Does have a, for a guy that has a big swing. Uh, but, you know, hey, r- career highs and RBIs, home runs, uh, career highs are tied at almost, are almost tied his career higher in walks. He was uh, just four off of that. I mean, uh, got to feel pretty good at it. I mean, got really got to feel pretty good about that move uh, there as well. But, hey, Alex Anthopoulos, not done wheeling and dealing. And I think this is one of the, we look back, this is, I saw some jokes like, did Alex Anthopoulos just give himself this extension? Like, how how does that work? But uh, you know, it's <laughs> it is. Uh, I don't know if you're a minority. He didn't donate one percent. Braves. He didn't donate one percent. What's that about? Yeah. Um, yeah golly. Alex. Shout out though. Good job. Good job there from Alex Anthopoulos. We round out this podcast though. Is that's great news. Fantastic news. The sobering news. Logan, why why in the world? Is Andrew Jones not a Hall of Famer? Like it does, it does not make sense. I'll state my case and then I'll give it to you here. I think if he does not, this might be a hot take. If he never leaves Atlanta and he just plays the 10 seasons in Atlanta and retires, he's a Hall of Famer. I think the recency bias of what happened on the back end of his career is why people don't have him in already. Because this guy was the the best defensive center fielder that we saw during that time. Like yeah, I think that's okay to say. Like, was he better than Griffey? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Like, I think that's okay to say. Best defensive center fielder. And then you combine the fact of what he did home. I mean, he hit over 400 home runs. But if you just take the right. 10 game, the 10 year sample size in Atlanta and don't look at anything else, I just think there's other guys that struggled earlier in their career and then had a great run. And it's the recency bias. That's just my opinion. Yeah. I, Andrew Jones should be a Hall of Famer, no doubt about it. Right. And th- I'm with you for all of those reasons too. Like what if, what if we were to say, okay, Andrew's 10 season run happened the last 10 years of his career, right? Like what, what, what if we were to to do that to me? I felt like, I feel like the perception would be vastly different, but you know, I'll put it like this. I mean, Ozzie Smith's a hall of famer, right? And we're basically saying that Andrew Jones is Ozzie Smith, but he also has 400 home runs, like premium position up the middle, 10 straight gold gloves, I don't know what else they could be looking for, but I'm glad to see, look, the percentage increased uh, this year. Not as much as I would hope. Uh, yeah. but obviously, the, the the crop of talent that was on the ballot, you know, pretty, pretty good, obviously. But the fact that it increased despite that, it does have me encouraged. I think he eventually gets in. I, I do. Yeah. That's, that's where I'm encouraged. But again, uh, that, that's how I view it because – just look at look at that ten year run and, and look at where Andrew ranked compared to not only other center fielders in that time, just people, but just baseball. other players. Yeah, he was probably one of, if not, I, I mean, I think he, he was top three as far as uh, wins above replacement goes during that that stretch. Are you ready for this? You ready for this? I just I, I wanted because I wanted yeah. to look this up and it's perfect timing. He accumulated over his career, and this is including the drop off years. To a 24.4 defensive war. That is the most by any outfielder in MLB history by a margin of 5.6 points. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, and, what else can you and, say if, right there? If, and during his full seasons in Atlanta, so not counting the 96 season, which I think was just kind of a partial rookie season for him, from 97 to 2007, he had a 26.7 defensive war, which was 10.2 more than any other defender at the at that any at any position. And the next closest was uh, Ivan Rodriguez. Like, and that's yeah. a catcher. 
So, I mean, you're, you're talking about a guy that was literally the best in baseball for a decade at his position defensively. Yeah. I mean, at a, at a premium, at a premium position too. Like it'd be one thing if he was, you know, left fielder or right fielder. I mean, he was doing it in center. That's up the middle. That's so important. And I don't know why that's just, I, I think people are starting to catch on because, you know, it's trending upwards, but golly, it should not be taking this long. It that, should. That, it, it irks me. So, all right, here's another and, just stat for, for our stat nerds. Uh, so there was not really uh, DRS, no defensive run saved or outs above average during his career, uh, spanning his career. But baseball reference created a stat, which I did not know this. And I don't, maybe you knew this mm-hmm. total zone runs. Have you seen this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's a, essentially a precursor. He had 230 total zone runs. That is the most by any center fielder since the stats data begin in 1953. Next closest, Willie Mays. Not <laughs> Willie Mays Hayes, Willie Mays. Yeah. Uh, known Hall of Famer Willie Mays Hayes, though. Yeah. yeah. One, one of the guys. I don't know, man. One of the in game. I, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't, I don't know either. It. It, it, him and Wagner. Like, Billy Wagner falling five votes shy to me was – Oh, that was so heartbreaking. And I, I, to me feel like, I don't know, this, this is, this is probably controversial, but I think if Billy Wagner plays for New York, he's Hands viewed at down. the same level as Mariano. I think he's up there with him. I would probably, I would still take Mariano over him, but just the fact that he's in that conversation to me tells, it should tell you he's a hall of famer to be the great. I mean, he's hands down the greatest lefty reliever of all time to me. I, just, man, I, don't, I don't know how many innings he pitched, but, you know, 900 some odd innings. You'd probably take those 900 innings over anyone else's. You're exactly right. If Billy Wagner pitched a premium market, which he p- pitched in Houston. Yep. Houston obviously is, is what it is now. Uh, he pitched for, I'm trying to go, just go through it in my head here. Uh, the Mets, he was with Philly. Was the Braves? The Braves yep. at the tail end of his career. Yep. Are we, is that, it, are we missing what, he anyone? Was a, did, did was you, he a Red did Sox? You say the Mets? Yeah, he was a Mets. Well, he was a Red Sox for like a year, yeah. wasn't he? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. I mean, um, I'm curious now. All right, so we got. I got it right here for you. So he goes Houston from '95 to 2003, from '04 to '0. What we got here? '09. Oh, He's a Met. '09. Oh, yeah, he switches and goes to Boston, uh, and then 2010 gotcha. he's in Atlanta. It's his last year. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's it's just ridiculous, man. The guy was like a six time All Star, finished fourth in the Cy Young, finished uh, twice in the top twenty of MVP voting. I mean, he was dominant. And if he plays for if he plays for a more high profile organization at that time, he might be a first ballot. Like you just, this is my thing with the Hall of Fame, and we'll just end it here because we're approaching that 40 minute mark. I think I told you 25 to 30, but that's fine. That's okay. We haven't done a pod in a while with, with, with this situation. Like it's absolutely crazy to think that we have a hall of fame where guys like Phil Rizzuto are in the hall of fame. Right. Yeah. Like you have guys like that's the problem with the, with the major league baseball hall of fame is you have some really, really good players, but it's like, you're not a hall of famer. Like you're just a really good player. Right. I don't know. And, and the thing about it too, and going back to Andrew, I mean, he, he did all of that during the, the steroid era too. And he was yeah. not suspected of using PEDs. Yeah. And so that, that's the thing. I, I don't know if he's being punished because of the era he played in, but, and again, that's a whole other conversation too, talking about the steroid era guys, because you know, that should bonds be in the hall of fame, should A-Rod be in the hall of fame. That's, always going to be a controversial topic, but, but, but guys like Andrew, he, you know, he was up there with those guys offensively during that time. And it it makes no sense that he's not already in Uh, the way that baseball does hall of fame is just so it's so infuriating. So infuriating. It's ridiculous, but you know what? They don't put us on the committee. So we'll just sit here and rant about it on the internet. That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. Hey, we appreciate you for watching. Appreciate you for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, give us a like, subscribe. Uh, The button's going to be right down there below Logan. So if he just wants to go like this, that's where uh, you can hit that subscribe button right down there, set up notifications. And uh, we'd love to have you join us as we get ready to ramp up. Uh, Man, baseball season's almost here. We cannot wait for you to be a part of what we have coming and uh, some great stuff as well. So make sure to do that. And if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else, we do appreciate that as well. 
A lot I've been talking about. We'll catch you next time, though, here on The Chopaholic. Braves addiction. It's unhealthy. We would love for you to join us. We'll catch you next time. Pile in here and make yourself feel at home. The crowded food is coming on. The Crowded Booth with Bryce Coons.